In this video, we'll be describing and highlighting the features and functions of all new Spaceback Advanced controls. We will show you how to navigate the menus and discuss how to commission the control board to your specific project based on unit models, types, and field installed accessories like auxiliary water coils, ERVs, and humidifiers. Let's start with a quick explanation of the components on the board itself. The first thing to point out is the all new display screen. The screen has various menus that display the faults, unit status, and allows you to adjust parameters to commission your Spaceback Air Handler. Starting on the left are the inputs from a field installed thermostat. R for 24 volts AC, G for fan, Y1 for first stage cooling, Y2 for second stage cooling, W1 for first stage heating, W2 for second stage heating, OB for the reversing valve, and C for common. The terminal labeled 24VAC is where the transformer, located in the electrical box, supplies 24 volt AC power to the main control board. The Molex connector labeled fan provides main power to the supply air blower. The Molex connector labeled JMP is where the jumper would be installed if the project requires a 115 volt installation. The jumper and instructions on how to convert the spaceback unit are provided with every spaceback air handler as a standard option. Please follow the instructions carefully to properly convert the spaceback unit from standard supply of 230 volt to 115 volt. The pressure transducer is labeled pressure and will have a clear plastic hose attached to it. This hose is connected to a static pressure tap located at the blower outlet. The pressure transducer reads pressure and displays delivered static pressure on the display screen. The new board has features built in that will allow the installer to use this pressure to balance the delivered air in the space pack system automatically. We'll explain this process in the unit settings portion of this video. The board also features three temperature inputs. LAT input is for leaving air temperature, which is factory installed and displayed on the display screen. Coil 1 is dedicated to the primary coil located within the space pack air handler. The sensor is located on the coil itself and monitors and controls certain functions and features in the air handler based on this temperature. Coil 2 temperature is optional and used for an external coil that can be field installed. The J6 terminal provides a speed control PWM signal to the blower from the board based on the set points commissioned by the installer. The board is equipped with four buttons used to navigate the display screen and menus within the control itself. ESC is used to escape out of certain menus. SEL is used to select menus and save settings. UP is used to navigate up in the display and DWN is used to navigate down in the display. The HVAC input terminal block consists of four terminals. The float terminals is a factory installed float switch located in the primary condensate drain pan. If the condensate backs up and lifts the float, the unit will shut down and display a float switch fault on the display screen. The ERV terminals receive a call from an external energy recovery ventilator to have the unit run the fan. If the fan is already running, the fan will continue to run at the speed set by the active thermostat inputs. If the fan is not running, the fan will run at the ERV fan setting commissioned in the control. The HSTAT input can be used to have the control enable an external humidifier by using the HUMDFR relay output. The HUMDFR relay output is a dry set of contacts. If the fan is running already, the fan will continue to run at the speed set by the active thermostat inputs. If the fan is not running, the fan will run at the humidifier fan setting commissioned in the control. The DFS terminals can be used by a heat pump to notify the control that has entered defrost mode. In this mode, the W2 relay output will be enabled, and if the fan is already running, the fan will continue to run at the speed set by the active thermostat inputs. If the fan is not running, the fan will run at the DFS fan setting commissioned in the control. The HVAC output terminal blocks consist of 11 terminals. AUX1 can be commissioned in the control to close on a heating call, a cooling call, or both heating or cooling. In a unit that is commissioned for ESP, the AUX2 terminal will always be energized during any cooling call. The AUX3 terminal will always be energized during a heating call. 
The fault terminal will close on a dry contact every time there is a fault on the control for an external fault indicator such as a light. The humidifier is a dry contact relay output for a field installed humidifier. The C terminal is the common output. The OB is the reversing valve output. The Y1 is first stage cooling output. The Y2 is second stage cooling output. The W1 is the first stage heating output. The W2 is the second stage heating output. You have to hold escape for three seconds. And that gets you into the menus. You hit select on setup. Select on unit settings. Select on model. And then up or down to change ESP to WCS. Once you're good with it, you hit select. And then you hit escape to go out. To change the size, you hold escape for three seconds, you hit select for setup, select on unit settings, scroll down to size, hit select to change, up or down to change the size of your unit. Once you're satisfied, hit select and hit escape to go back out to the standby screen. To change the unit type, hold escape for three seconds, select on setup, select on unit settings, scroll down to unit type, hit select. For ESP type, you have heat pump, or AC only. Once you're satisfied, hit select and hit escape to return to the standby menu. To change your reversing valve options, hold escape for three seconds, select on setup, select for unit settings, scroll down to the reverse valve menu Hit select to change when the reversing valve is energized on an O in cooling or on a B for heating. Hit select when you're satisfied. Hit escape. Go back out to the standby screen. If you have a secondary hot water coil, you want to add it for the menu for your unit. Hold escape for three seconds, select on setup, select on unit settings, down to secondary hot water coil, hit select, yes if it's present, no if it's not present. Hit select to save, escape to return to standby. The board also has auxiliary one uh, relays, which can be set to close during a heating call or a cooling call, or on both heating and cooling calls. To access that menu, hit escape for three seconds, select on setup, select on unit settings, scroll down to auxiliary one menu, select to access up up to change your settings to either auxiliary one enabled on heat cool call cooling only call or heating call press select to save and escape out to standby the fan has two options either constant speed or constant pressure in order to change that hold escape for three seconds Select on setup, select on unit settings, scroll down to fan menu, hit your fan menu, hit select to access, 
constant pressure, or constant speed. Hit select to save and escape out to standby. The anti-frost protection temperature setting allows you to adjust from 34 degrees to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the temperature of the primary coil. If the coil drops below the set point, the anti-freeze alarm will, will be signaled on the screen. To access, hit escape for three seconds. Select on setup, select on unit settings. Scroll to the AFST menu. Hit select to access and go up or down to set point. Hit select to save and escape out to standby. Okay, there are also three fan settings, fan balancing, start temp, and fan delay. To access the fan balancing from the standby screen, hold escape for three seconds. Select on setup, scroll down to fan settings, select, select on fan balancing. This allows you to adjust the speed percentage for every type of call. A Y1 call, a Y2 call, a Y1 and 2 together, a W1, a W2, a W1 and 2, a G call, humidifier call, ERV call, and a defrost call. In order to change the speed, hit select, hit select to change the percentage, scroll up, scroll down. The screen will also display in real time the changes being made as you're making them. Select to save, escape, out to the setup standby menu. To access the start temp, hold escape from standby for three seconds. Select on setup, scroll down to fan settings, select, scroll down to start temp menu, select. This allows you to adjust the temperature when there's a heating or cooling call that the fan will start. So you can select on heating start temperature, scroll up or down to adjust, hit select to save, or cooling start temperature, select to adjust, scroll up or down, select to save, escape out to the standby menu. To access the fan delay menu, hold escape for three seconds. Hit select on setup, scroll down to fan settings, hit select, scroll down to fan delay, hit select. Here you can adjust the on delay or the fan off delay. Select to adjust, scroll up or down, select to save, escape out to the standby menu.